So in part two now, we're going to show you a couple of other things here. So number one to do is to bring up the um, screen that I need. Okay, so I'll select that and I'll bring that in here. Very good. So my mic is set up here and I am going uh, across to the, um, if, for example, I'm going to play some audio. And uh, normally the best thing to do is to set up uh, the backing track. If I just play it, it'll be really loud, way too loud on its own, okay? So if I just play it here, for example. With eyes that dreamed of being the one who will dance. I couldn't really talk over it properly as far as that's concerned. So what I've set up there is a ducker. Okay, and I'm sure you've done it, but if not, I'm going to show you quickly how to do it now. So when I'm talking, it's bringing down the level of the music. When I stop talking, the music will come back up and you can set up the maximum level that you want it and the minimum level that you want it to be on the compressor. So basically send the voice to a group and send the actual uh, music to a group as well and I like to set up a, uh, a longer um, decay on the compressor so it takes longer to come back and you can see it's happening here I'm doing this here as well for another reason but we'll do this channel here first so if I look at the music channel here Arizona State University believes in community engagement and it's basically a speaker test uh, for Bose actually <laughs> But um, you can see on the compressor, all I did here is I selected Ducker 1. And um, when I'm speaking, I'm running to subgroup 1 and it's ducking this channel here. And it's up to you how quickly you want it to compress. If you want to come in quickly or take your time as far as that's concerned. And if you want more ratio, you can compress it even further down. New dog, New York. And there's a really great way of um, doing a backing track while you're speaking above your stream if you're uh, describing anything. Okay, let's stop that. And now a few other things I've done here, I'm using uh, on vMix, for example, I'm using a stream deck. Uh, this is the stream deck here, and that can be programmed as my button. So as I'm touching buttons here, for example, I can change scenes. So for example, I've got a Mac running here. Um, Okay, that's a Mac running via Ethernet using the um, the um, vMix uh, desktop sharing. So I can share a Mac, I can share another PC, I've got another PC here. So if I do this Mac here, because obviously I wanted to before to show you some uh, inputs via Mac or how it looks on an on a, on a OS, and then I can quickly fade into a Mac right there. Uh, and then I've got another PC running here. So I can select the PC and all, all this can be easily done and that's a PC running, an entirely different PC running. Or I can share this desktop as well, which is basically what we were doing before. It's a very, very easy way to control it. Obviously you can program a normal keyboard for that as well, or even MIDI foot switches that I've done before. I, the, um, the main thing to think about when you're streaming, as I said before, is where you're streaming to and probably practice and set up your audio as, audio as much as possible so it sounds great in your headphones. Um, and then do a test mix as well. Um, and then the outputs go can go to several places. If we share the, uh, the screen right here, okay. Um, this is going to look a bit odd to you because it's got a lot of stuff on the screen. Um, but anyway, I'm going to go to full screen here and um, fade. So this is everything showing on the screen. So I've got a picture here, for example, if I click on that there, that's this one here. Uh, that's a JPEG, it's another JPEG. That's the actual um, um, text underneath that we can mix into it. Uh, I've got a couple of camera views here and there. Uh, the Mac, the PC, and the, the actual, the desktop itself, the other screen, you can also share websites in there as well. Um, if I'm going back to myself there, I think the easiest thing for you to see is if I leave the UI there, it's the least. 
And in the screen here, as you can see, there's all the fades and merges that you can do. Um, and then in the settings page, you've got um, the, all the commands for triggering. And in the stream, this is where you set up your streams, okay? So if I click on the, the stream button here, I'm at the moment recording, so it won't really let me do that properly. So in here, I've got the ability to stream directly to Facebook. Yeah, it'll tell me I can't stream. That's okay, I'm stopping everything. Um, that's perfectly okay. Stop that. Um, and then I can select Facebook or I can select um, different other profiles that I have in there. Thank you. That's all right. It's not a problem. There's, um, so there's different profiles we can select from to stream to. So when you're Facebook streaming directly from vMix, you can sign up with your normal signature and stream to it or stream to YouTube or Vimeo or even three streams at the same time while I'm recording. Obviously, it's best not to do it all together, but um, I think that's the easiest thing to do. Uh, OBS, as I said before, OBS has very, very similar functionality. Uh, and mainly these two, there's a free vMix and OBS is obviously free, but between these two, I think are the best programs to use for streaming out. And if you just want a very basic setup, then obviously Facebook Live, or if you have subscribers, then to YouTube.